Morning. This is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. It is uh, Tuesday morning, the 30th of March, 808. End of month, end of quarter. Coming up here today and tomorrow. Um, just really quick. Take a moment to read this legal notice. Basically, it's past performance is not indicative of future results. This is for educational purposes only. I'm sharing my trade plan with you. In hopes that it makes you a better trader, but my trade plan is not for everybody, right? So, uh, anyway, if you'll take a moment to read that, if you disagree with anything in there, just you're welcome to leave. Um, so, um, let's get started really quick. So, yesterday, let's look at the five-minute chart. Drag it over. And so, when we look at the five-minute chart yesterday, you see how we had that whole area that was a single print? Like, it was just, hold on a second here. So a couple of things. First of all, I didn't have a great day yesterday, which is not a problem. Uh, but what you'll see is that we rejected out of the white zone early in the morning, right? Auctioned all the way through the single prints. Remember the top of the single prints and the bottom of the single prints tend to make good trade locations, right? And I couldn't put the pieces together on ES or in NQ, mostly because we got this power hour of chop right through here that really threw me in terms of I couldn't figure out how to get out of the mud. I'd taken some stops in CL, uh, and I took a stop, I think, in NQ. Either way, I just couldn't get it going. It was just, this just sucked, right? When you have this long, protracted 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., like, you just don't, I just don't look for this kind of PA at this time of day, and I kind of threw in the uh, towel, and then it basically switched from consolidation to trend up, and we just re-auctioned the same area when we held over value area high all day long. So I just didn't have a lot to explain off of that. I, I just couldn't put it together yesterday and that's okay. So no matter how hard we try, right, there, there's no nirvana with, with trade setups, right? You're, sometimes you're going to get it. Sometimes you're not going to get it. Um, and the idea would be, right, the idea would be to have some kind of idea of where where you have the best odds and then hope the PA kicks in. I'm PA sensitive. Some people aren't. All right, if you just drew this up like this, swing low, oops, swing low to swing high, you would be like, Simon, what was so hard about that? Came back to the 50-60, held the 7-8-6 and rallied. The only deal is I don't use 20-point stops in my trading, but the trade worked, right? This kind of PA will never benefit me. It'll always put me on pause, and um, I try to stay away from markets that do this. And when I chalked it up at the end of the day, I just decided that there was nothing I could do to improve that because I would have never, even if I got in the perfect entries through here, I would have never, ever held. I need this price action to come in pretty quickly. And you can tell the market was just muddled off the open. You see where the way, see how the fi way the five minute bars are trading there and look how they're trading over here. They're, they're just snapping when you get to the turn. You do get the long consolidation on top. The difference being is on top in a bull market, you'd expect this consolidation like if this is what I expected to happen, I would hunt the trade, right? Like I'd say get above and then hunt it over here. But even though I know that from a professional standpoint, knowing that from a time sensitive standpoint is different because I'm just not looking for it, right? At the top I am, at the bottom I'm not. At the bottom I expected to be crisp and snap out of there. So it didn't, that's okay. I didn't see a w real way to improve yesterday. And the one thing that we did I thought very well as a room is avoid getting murdered. Also, it was a Monday. Mondays have just not been stellar, right? Save this. Let's go change the uh, chart. Okay, so the other thing that you'll see there is we came into the single prints and rejected out of here on top. We came to the, this whole area just got re-auctioned basically. Is all it did yesterday and I couldn't figure out I just couldn't put the pieces together so if you ever see this again this is a pretty rare formation but if you see this formation again kind of know that this may be the PA that's according to it I don't even know what kind of tab I'd put that under so it's single prints 
below the high and above the low. It's kind of like not on the ends. The single prints are just easier to deal with on the edges like this was over here. See how much easier a trade location that was? So we'll just work on it going forward. So let's start moving things around. First of all, we can get rid of this because we filled in the volume there clearly. Um, let's see, we can move pieces around. So this, this goes up here. This goes like this. This goes here. Mm -hmm. Where do Um, this goes over here and turns yellow. So again, I would expect a response out of that 3921 if and when it gets there. Um, let's move this to duplicate. Okay, so let's look at this. Prior days high, prior days low. Single prints right above the high. Uh, swing high, all-time high, I believe, if I have that correct. Um, so you have a double distribution here. See this? So, so this is valid, but it's not valid, right? So what I would do is put a blue line because part of it's inside the value area and it's inside the prior day, but we want to know why we're rotating around here. So blue zone. Uh, for those who are second. Well, I don't know why that's not working, but we'll fix it. So point of control, worst place to trade. And then this will go to light blue. It's a double distribution there, so you'll often find a response out of that, but it's also inside prior day's value area for part of it. Certainly I would lean towards the back of that instead of the front of it. Um, prior day's low, there's tiny single prints down here. None down here. Like I really think that 3900 is the revisit. So, and again, just like anything else, right, we've launched. So the one thing you want to watch, so see how we're just developing this huge balance area, right? So just grinding through that. But this is the swing low to the swing high. Actually, swing high goes right here. So that means this area right down here is 3907 to 3992. This is the 5060 area. I'll highlight it to make it a different color. Fill color, let's go with bubble gum color. Let's see if that shows up at all. Oh, there you go. That's the 5060. Back down off the swing low from the 25th. And then we had those white lines. This is the 50 retrace from the March 3rd low, 62. And then the 786 is somewhere down here, 786. So 50, 62, 786, right? That's the bigger picture, March 3rd swing. 
And then this is the 50 60 from the smaller swing back on the 25th. Okay. And obviously, what our clue would be is an establishing behind the 62 retrace. Then that 50 retrace would become resistance, that 3910 area. And you'd be targeting for a break of the 25th low. If you were positioning for that, that would be the trade that I would look for. Conversely, hold the 50 60 and you'd look for a retrace up to the 3980. So that's kind of like your becomes your bull bear line, really. Uh, for a bigger picture uh, thought process. And so that translates, we'll save this. And that translates into, we have a new guest in the room. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Um, Araiz, Araiz, maybe, I'll give it a shot. And uh, I'm Simon, welcome, just kind of watch and it's complex, so just hang on and watch as you can and do the best you can. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All the conversation and chat takes place in the general in the uh, general uh, area. So I don't pay any attention to the chat in Zoom itself. So uh, it's all on Slack. So uh, let's go see what that looks like on the five minute chart. If I can find my five minute chart, let's see. Which screen do you hide upon? There it is. Okay, so this is the overnight now. Let's get that posted for overnight. Okay, so if we look at the overnight, starting in Asia, that's at 1700 my time. That's Asia open, All right? And you can see we opened inside a value. Again, that point of control just a horrible place to trade, right? See how it just chops through there? That sucks, right? We finally grind all the way through. So overnight, look at the PA, right? You wouldn't go, even though we're down, right? See that PA? That is hard for us to make money. It, the per, I'll tell you who makes money in this. Peter, you do pretty well, right? Because you just have the area, and he has the patience of a saint, um, and he can get the extensions. But really, our areas, when we look at this, is number one, can we establish below value area low, right, if we're going to roll lower? Remember, the 50, 60, 50, 60 off that low sits up down here, right? So this is really your target back if you're shorting. So the first question is, the blue anomaly is a weak anomaly, right? So the reason I put up the blue anomaly is I expect some kind of counter rotation there, but not necessarily crisp. And I just want to know why it's rotating here. So it's both value area lows. So you're going to attract all retail traders, right, into that area. And you can just see we're still getting this chop, chop, chop off the five minutes, right? Then we come down to prior day's low, 39, um, 3150. We haven't gotten there yet. That's the next test. And then this anomaly, this 3922 to 3920, this is the first great trade location that we have, right? Followed by this whole area in this 3908 to 3892. So remember, this is the 50-60 off the low of the, of the 25th. So this is a prior day's low. That's a key area for potential trap. And ideally, what we'd look for here, right? So when we get in here, there's three locations. The top, oops. Found the top. Prior day's low. Anomaly. And then the low down here. So the ones that if you if you had to go, well, Simon, which ones get the best response? Well, it's almost always when you look backwards, it's something off the top and something off the bottom. We happen to have an anomaly in between here. So all these locations are valid. So you're looking for setup. Peter, do you have anything lined up in that 3908 to 3892 area that's um, outstanding for you? That you'd be like, that's an area from the PNF perspective? Let me know if you do, if you can post that up. So, and then on top, obviously, above the 3973, 74, it's all time high. There's just, by definition, no resistance up. And I sure as heck hope we don't spend all day traversing this area. But, you know, we're already down, we're down nine to start the day with, and they're very likely to drive right back to 3960 to start the day. So I'm not bullish or bearish as usual. I'm looking for the specific setup, All right? So I'm going to slide this on over. 
Okay, now let's talk about what Bill was talking about yesterday. I was trying to make, I spent two hours trying to make sense of the idea or the concept. And what I came to the conclusion of, to no criticism of Bill whatsoever, it was a fine, it's a fine addition, I just haven't figured out how to make it work, is that when you get the arrows, it does tell you where there's potential trend going to change. See, it tells you that they're pushing, but it doesn't do it consistently like, if we were trading overnight, so like in this particular case, right, the, the process, so first of all, the process was messed up last night because we kept crisscrossing in this area, right? So I was trying to figure out how to add the arrows without without messing up. Uh... Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, Peter. Um, so this is a push to the high right here. So this fractal becomes the most important, right? So one thing is we had, we're having range contraction instead of expansion. And so the question is how quickly do we go back to the 175 and the 1.5? I did not figure out a way to trade yesterday morning any better than I did. If we consolidate for an hour at the low, I'm usually just gonna be out of luck on that anyways. That's just how it's gonna go, right? There's just not much I can do to improve that. But if you look overnight, this is the push to the high. So now the break of this location. So initially, right, break of that location. So you'll notice, see how all the volume came at the top of this, right? What you really want is all the volume to come in on the bottom. And I'm going to explain why in just a second. But on this particular, um, let's see if I got that right. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three, that's not right. I didn't do it right, sorry. And it's hidden behind something, but it came in at the top. Okay, all the volume came in at the top here, which makes sense when they lift, but I'm starting to look at and getting discerning on where the point of control is for the break coming on these. And where I like the break coming from is when the point control is at the bottom. So see how this is the POC right here, this is the POC for this push, right? So that would have, technically it would have trapped you, right? And the other thing I'm looking at is there's a lack of arrows. So see all of a sudden these arrows start showing up here, I'm talking about the blue arrows. So I'm trying to figure out how to integrate them, right? I know they work, I just don't have the handle on them. I know when those blue arrows show up, they're trying to push, like as a, as a group, if I circle off those blue arrows, see as we're coming down, there's the blue arrow down. I know they were pushing momentum wise. So I know when I get above those arrows, right? That's just an old trade. You get above those arrows and we tend to push, right? So what tends to happen is if at turning points, if you don't get the arrows, you tend to get failures, right? But I wanna show you something here. So see how this, this became the next three bar combo right here, right? Followed by this, right? As it was pushing up and actually on a 175, you'd actually want the whole piece, but it was overnight. So we're just just follow along. So this whole area, this whole area ends up, I would just extend the whole thing out, right? So I'm gonna draw this out. I would actually, instead of just making one three bar combo, I would just assume everything in here, I would just draw that, right? And so you can see, so see how that's the top of that profile and the point of control came between the middle towards the lower end. It's just not at the very top, right? So see when that pushed all the way up, and then you're getting the blue arrows in conjunction. So the way Bill, I have a tendency of misinterpreting what Bill's telling me sometimes. So what Bill said, I wrote it down. He said, what Bill said is what that tells me. So when I see those arrows show up, I know I get a longer extension. So what he didn't say was that the setups weren't valid beforehand. He goes, what the arrows are telling me. So remember, each one of us is individual and we're building our, on our experience base. So what, what stuck with me when, in my conversation with Bill was, he goes, Simon, when I see those arrows, is I know I have a larger than average chance of getting a big extension on that trade. That's really important information. Because then what my brain wants to do is I want to be able to respond rapidly, right? And I just like everyone else in this room, every single one of us, right? Uh, I'm going to take a piece of information and I automatically want to label it a 10. Right, I want to be like, oh, that's the key 
to everything. If we get that, that makes everything work. And at the same time, right, what I don't want to do in the room is I don't want to add instability to the decision, either to my decision making or anyone else's decision making, right? So the way I've done that is in my mind, I've structured those arrows as threes out of 10, right? So the three bar combo on a two range is a 10, right? This is a three. That means it becomes background information and I need to study it more to understand how it interacts. But I, I do know that Bill is correct. When you get those, when you tend to start getting these arrows and then you trigger on a proper entry, right? You tend to get larger extensions and that's true. When you didn't have the arrows, even though it triggered for short, right? It came back and ran against you, right? If you look at this, this is the last three bar combo to the high. Technically it's this specific, very specifically. And here I'm going to eliminate this. So get rid of the VWAP for a second. So we have less noise so everyone can see this. Okay, so, so first of all, we're in the point of control. That's a tough place to trade to begin with inside of here, right? So, so the first question is, would I even trade this inside the point of control? Shoulder shrug, I'm not sure I would have had I been up at two in the morning, right? Next we have London Open coming up, right? Which makes any of this kind of difficult to trade anyways, because you don't know what the order flow will look like off the open. You get London Open right here, right? London Open pushes up. This specifically is our last three bar combo, right? So forget the arrows. I see the arrows there. I know they're trying to push momentum. Okay, which is great. That's the point of control is right in the middle. So so like when I look at that, you want to say, well, yeah, hell yeah, I would have taken that. But when you look at it, I probably would not have taken this trade inside this point of control, even though it worked, because I just wouldn't have, right? It just the the problem with this area is it works once and it fails four times. And so I just wouldn't have taken the trade here. But had I not known this was point of control the prior day, right? What you'll notice and what I noticed was, first of all, you had all these arrows. See all these these three, right? So I want to show you. So see how they're all concentrated? So what that's telling you is, hey, look, they're really pushing in here, right? And so what I went back and did was this. I was like, if I get them concentrated in an area like this, like I go from here to here, right? See that point of control? That's the point of control of all three of those momentum pushes. I'm just looking at the blue arrows going, hey, how are these stacking up? I don't care about this guy so much, right? Because he's trying to short. We all know this guy gets screwed half the time, right? But these guys are really trying to push and get up to value area high. Like that has to be your target. It's prior days high, value area high. So once we get behind them, right? So this is the cumulative point of control of this area. Once we get behind them, they drew it back up on a 50, 60 push. And if you just followed the process through there, realistically, if you decided to trade here, the realistic deal is you probably took the stop the first time, right? You probably took the stop the first time and you got paid. And then hopefully if you held and you added back, right? So this is the break, break of the point of control. This is entry number one. This is entry number two this is entry number three if you still have firing power and your stop goes right here right and that told and getting behind these blue arrows told you that you had a potential big move coming to you and then you got the beautiful sweep and if you look where you're going to target like the obvious area to target would be back towards this anomaly that's sitting here in value area low which is exactly what happened so peter i imagine you caught that because that's right up your that's right up your alley and that's cool i have i think that's great so I've got no issue with that. Um, again, I'd like to see if the moves are crisp um, this morning, and then we'll see where it goes. I'm, go I'm going to stay on the 175 and on the two range. Um, again, I'm looking for the head and shoulders patterns, and I just want to make sure that we just don't get to the grind. Remember, it's the last two days of the month. It's the end of the quarter. We have that big hedge fund blowing up. You're going to see some weird moves, right? You're going to see some weird moves because they're still liquidating it. So that was a, I was wrong. It was not 4 billion. It was $35 billion fund leveraged, right? So let's get it straight. 35 billion leveraged at some points, 10 to one, right? So it's a lot of unwinding to do. It's a lot of money passing through the market. And it's just gonna, there's no way you're gonna get a liquidation like that, a hedge fund liquidation 
and uh, um, not have it ripple through the market. It's just a big ass liquidation, right? So let's go narrow this down. I'm going to leave the 175 up, right? We know we're in a blue anomaly. We're at value area low. My guess is at some point they try to step in. Let's uh, change this to RTH only. And let's put back on our VWAP. Yep, hit me, Joyce. Oh, hold on a second. I did something wrong. It is, but it's tricky. You really want it towards the bottom of your formation, not towards the top. But I would not worry about it, Joyce, if I were you. Let me worry about it. Don't you worry about it because it's going to add an insecurity to taking the trades. And the win rate is sufficient enough that you should just focus on location and the proper setup. It's very nuanced. Like you'd have to have a very high level of expertise to be able to distinguish that, oh, this one's good and this one's bad. You just haven't had the time to go through enough of them. So um, I'm going to minimize, I'm going to keep it on the 175, I think, this morning. I'll keep the two smaller. I don't want to go to the one and a half. If the trades don't set up off the 175 and the two, it's probably not worth our time. Anyways, and then I'm on an eight range on CL. And you can already see, like, it's also a little bit off the chain there because the yeah, we're V'ing up. There's just no reversal signal here. There was at the top for short. So that overnight, I'll switch it. Up. So this is the most important combo right here. Why? It's the combo to the high, right? So this is what it should look like when it breaks. Uh, I'm going to say this bar is your entry, a little bit of a retrace, and then flush. That's what we're looking for, right? I would not take this three-bar combo all the way up here. It's too far away. It needs to reset with something down lower. Um, this one worked. This is your last three-bar combo. The question is, like, overnight, do we cut it lower, right? It doesn't matter if we drop two ticks off of that. There you go. Why don't you get the two ticks off? There's your entry. So I'd be, I'm going to go back to a six range and a, and leave, I'll leave the eight range up, but I'm going to go back to a six range because I can already see, it's giving me the setups that I'm looking for. This is your, and remember when you just go lower, you need a three bar combo. So in this case, or, or some variation thereof, in this case, it's a four bar combo, right? But you need some, you need all the pieces, unlike on the eight or a 10 range chart. Right, you do not need that, so I'm going to stay on a six range for now and see if that improves the entries a little bit. And then let's go and make one last correction and move this to day session only. And you can see the credit price down, we've broken the initial balance of the first couple of minutes. Right, we've come up, and it sure looks like it's in balance. And remember, these are locations, so I know there's a bunch of stuff on there, right. This is our third and fourth rail that we're looking to get to in terms of away from VWAP. And then we want to get set up on the edge if we possibly can, right? Just, it's not always there, but if we can get it set up, that's where we want it. So just one step at a time. And then as you can see, this is a weak anomaly, but it's holding for now, right? And that's just retail traders dancing around on the point of control. I have not looked, nor do I really care about what's on Ecom, but I'll look really quick just to see if we have anything important or interesting. So Mr. Market Watch says Tuesday. Consumer Confidence Index, 9 a.m. New York Fed President speaks at 1.30. 
Sounds like a nice quiet day, right? And you can already see off the out of the gate, right? Look at the look at how reduced the rotation is, right? Literally stuck in mud, All right? That's the opposite of the open that we've been getting for weeks now, right? So the first thing that tells me is get comfortable with it being slower, Simon, All right? Let it come to you. I need to adjust my NQ charts really quick. There we go. We're below the RTH VWAP, and I triggered long on uh, NQ, not taking. I'll wait till the, I'll burn the first half hour. Anyone have any questions? Does everyone understand what I'm going to attempt to accomplish today? All right, I want location, and I want to see evidence of rotation. So automatically, ES almost kind of gets like, whoa, wait a minute. There's not a lot there, right? I did. Joyce, they're up there. Above CL and NQ, right? Oh, wait, maybe I didn't. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yes, I can. Please forgive me. What do I know? Here you go, my dear. And I'll even post those on. I've been posting them on stock tweets. I don't know that anyone follows them on stock tweets. But I've been posting them there. You're welcome. Look at that. That grind. I hate that. Right? Just a great way to get chopped. Wait till we see rotations. Remember, Joyce, if it doesn't set up what you want, you don't trade. All right? You're just looking for your setup. It's all we're trading. We really don't care what the market does one way or the other, at least hypothetically. Good. So CL, we are inside value. Right, raise the line so that chart gets cleaned up. Oh, there we go. We're inside value and we're inside the point of control, right? Simply the most difficult place to trade on the chart. All right, so what this tells me is no matter what happens, I'm not going to take a trade in here. Right now, what I might try, if I'm willing to get chopped up, so see how this pushed to a new high over here? Let's say I think that we're going to roll down below 60, okay? So I've got to have a thesis, right? So if I look at my thesis, how this will work is that's the 50, 60 back off the impulse move down, but it didn't break a swing to the left, right? So what I'm looking for here is to break this three bar combo. And in order to take that trade, I either have to cut size or accept that it may stop. Why? Because it's inside of volume and we're ping ponging and I would need it below 60, 30. That would be the break to start accelerating it to the downside, right? ES and NQ slowly melting. Uh, NQ coming down to 12, 8, 11, 75, which is prior days low. Again, that chart is posted up on the website already. It just isn't very violent, right? This is the opposite of what we've seen. Like on a 175, 
This sucks. We want those bars to stretch, right? Look at the PNF chart just wrapping over itself, right? And that makes sense because we're in this crummy little anomaly. It's not strong, but it's strong enough to cause challenges. And also the best trades are going to occur where when we're way away from VWAP and then that VWAP makes great targets back in for either for the short back down or the long back up. So we'd like it to extend away either way. That's going to be the problem with that NQ short. I mean, that CL short right there as well. And so the question comes as traders, right? So this is something that Victor is really, really good at, right? Victor goes location first, trade setup second. Like it's just programmed in his brain. He doesn't take trades that are mediocre. And it's PL, if you look. So I've been working with Victor now for Victor, how long has it been? Five years, buddy? It's been a long time. Four years, five years. And Victor's having his biggest his biggest weeks are exceeding his big his his years at this point. Right? And he's just smoking it left and right. Six years. Yeah, it's been awesome. So um, he's just kicking ass because he knows exactly what he's looking for. He manages his risk when it's not working. And he knows he has a very special talent that cannot be taught, which is he inherently knows when to get aggressive. The most impressive thing I ever saw him do was the Trump election. That was just freaking kick ass. He was short one way and long the other, I think, if legend has it. Or maybe that was over a couple of days. And you got Brexit, too, if I remember correctly. And even with all of that and those great trades, he's just smoking it now without even having those monstrous moves. That's all your work, brother. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that was very good. When you see this on ES, I'm just telling you guys, just pretend like it doesn't exist. This is trend type behavior. People are trying to catch this turn here, just getting stop, 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 stop it. It's a really crummy way to start your day. So maybe, Bill, would this be a place where I'd look for an arrow to show up to indicate that they've either made the final push for exhaustion I still don't have context, so if you can fill that context in for me during the day, because uh, I know you're using it in a very specific way. So if you can just DM me on that, I'd appreciate it so I can have a good idea of how you're integrating it. Twelve, eight, eleven. Right off, see it's total retail or retail traders in control. Look on NQ. We just came right off twelve, eight, eleven, seventy five, like to the tick. Right? See how you get that almost immediate response? That just tells me that it's not institutional trading that isn't in control, it's the retail trader. <laughs> 